Hello, I'm Eric Hunter, and this is Behind the Curtain. Here we showcase student productions, whether it be short films for class, a personal project, or even a feature film. And this is our season finale. For this episode, we'll be reverting to our monochromatic roots from episode one with another black and white film. This week, we're showcasing the short film Laudatio, directed by Madeline Knight. This film particularly caught our eye because Madeline collaborated with a Jacobs School of Music PhD student, Michaela McComas, who performed the film's score. So let's take a look and afterwards we'll sit down with Madeline and Michaela and discuss the creative process that went into the making of Laudatio.
Please welcome to the show, Madeline Knight and Michaela McComas. Thanks for being on the show, guys. Thanks, Thanks for so having much. us. Oh, thank God your arms are long. <laughs> um, so um, it was a great film. I loved watching it. Uh, I'm curious, with, with, a, with a, a silent film, the, um, the, the meaning of the film, the plot line, is always a, a little more ambiguous than whenever there's dialogue. Uh, so I'm curious. Was there meant to be a specific plot line? Uh, was it centered around domestic abuse, or was it entirely ambiguous left up to the, to the audience? Well, I think um, when we first started talking about it, she had a very specific idea about what the, the film was going to be about. And um, I loved it. <laughs> Obviously, it was great. Um, but then we went back to the drawing board because like, it involved like monks and cathedrals. And like obviously, as students, we have such limited resources. Um, so I actually recruited a, um, a writer from Writer's Talk, which is the creative writing club here at, um, at IU. And I asked if anyone was interested in screenwriting. And someone got back to me, Michaela, Michaela Joyce, different Michaela. Um, and we kind of just listened to the music. And we had a couple different ways that we were like, well, it could be interpreted like this. It could be interpreted like this. And I think each of us kind of had our own interpretation, but we really wanted it to like be ambiguous for the audience to get something out of it themselves. Right. OK. Uh, after watching the film for the first time, um, I, I would have never guessed that monks and cathedrals were in the first draft. <laughs> um, but I really liked the way it turned out. Uh, I, I thought the ambiguity was awesome. And uh, so the uh, you answered my next question, which was, um, the, the process of, of scoring the, the piece with Laudatio, La right? Laudatio? La that, La that, that's the name of the... Uh, Laudatio. <laughs> Laudatio. Yeah. We, we, she tried to teach me how to say it before the show, and we I, did I still can't get it. Yeah. But Laudatio, yeah? Laudatio. La da <laughs> you say it. <laughs> Laudatio. What she said, yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you brought the song first. And you tried to you tried to come up with a story to match the song. That's how the process went. Yeah. So okay. I contacted Madeline um, to do a different project for me. I had a professor retiring, and I wanted to put together a horn choir for him. And so she did all the editing for that, and it was so good that I told her about a dream that I have for a long time, of taking this uh, piece for unaccompanied French horn, mm -hmm. and putting it to a silent black and white film. And when I pitched it to her, at first it was more of like a Humphrey Bogart Three Stooges there's been a murder, see, <laughs> kind of a thing. <laughs> right, right. It was a little more hokey, a little bit funny, and less serious. And they right. came back with something completely different. And I loved it. It was good. <laughs> right, OK. So the song is performed primarily on a French horn then, right? That's, that's, what, that's what you played? Yeah, yeah. It's composed for solo horn by Bernard Kroll. OK, awesome. So that's what I thought. I did a lot of <laughs> research, because I had no idea. And I actually wore a tie with French horns on it today. Oh my god, really? that's I was amazing. Si I was sixty percent <laughs> sure that it was the right the right type of brass Fantastic. instrument. So Fantastic. I'm glad that I don't look like an idiot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so is, is that the instrument that you specialize in then? Or do, yeah? Yeah, I'm a doctoral student here at IU um, in Jacobs doing French horn and hopefully become a professor of horn someday. Nice. But doing collaborative projects is something I'm really passionate about. Right. So it's thankful Madeline would take on the project for me and help benefit both of us, hopefully. Absolutely. And I, I think what's really cool about it is that she actually, like when we started talking about it, we really wanted it to be performed live, right? So yeah. um, was it in October? Uh, um, October, wow. she, I think it's October. Sure. Yeah. Uh, she performed her French horn piece, Laudatio, with the movie going on behind it. So that was a really neat experience just to kind of see it all come together. OK. So is that, have you done this before? Have you scored films before? Me? Yes. No. So this was your first experience yeah. doing this. Yeah, well, and I presented the idea to Madeline. She said, I've never created film around music. Right. right. And I'm sure it's been done before. It's not of something course. completely new. But when I showed it to her, she said, I, I like the piece enough. I'd like to take a crack at it. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yes, uh, it, it, it was very impressive the way that you, you followed the music with the story. Uh, and I'm a film major myself, and I've never done that. And I don't think I could do it, because <laughs> I'm not musically inclined at all. And music instruments just confuse me. I, I can't, I can't we'll get on with it. We'll help you. We'll help you. That would be awesome. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was awesome. confused, too. I did the French horn piece for her before. And right. I was like calling all my friends who like knew music. I was like, does this sound good? <laughs> and then I would send it to her, and she'd be like, whoa. 
<laughs> so it took a little bit of right. collaboration there. And then once I started doing this piece, I was like, OK, now I just have to worry about one French horn yes. versus like uh, 26, uh, which was. That's too many French horns to worry yeah, about. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. I think uh, your collaboration was awesome. I think it was u uber successful for the film. I think it turned out awesome. Where did this, how did this come to be? Where did you guys find each other? How did so oh, yeah, Cinema yeah, Cinema Guild. Um, okay. They, she reached out to Student Cinema Guild looking for someone to edit her French horn piece for her professor who was retiring. Okay. And um, I saw the ad and I was like, I will do it. <laughs> um, even though I kind of, I probably shouldn't have. Um, looking back, <laughs> busy. No, no, just because I knew nothing about music. Um, and so then I was like, well, you know, I'll learn something throughout this process. Mm -hmm. And she was great. She was really patient and. Um, I was really happy with how it turned out. She seemed happy. Your work made my professor cry. He was so thankful for good. what you did. Yeah, so yeah. I guess it was successful. It's yeah. good when you make a professor cry. <laughs> I, I am very thankful I ended up doing that because because of that we got to connect and then work on future stuff and now La awesome. So, <laughs> So you guys met, the you connected for this project the same way that I connected with you, Madeline. Th this is a bit of a shameless plug, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I was, if, if you look at the credits very closely, <laughs> my name is in there. Yeah. And um, it's because we have a mutual friend who, and her name's Claire Austin, she's also in the Cinema Guild, and she, she came to me and she was like, Eric, uh, do you want to help with a film? And I was like, oh yeah, because I was new on campus, I didn't really have friends <laughs> or, or really like uh, any, anything under my belt, I didn't know anybody, so I was like, yeah, absolutely. And, and I showed up, uh, I had two sprained ankles. I was yeah. on crutches. Oh, he was oh on my crutches. Goodness. I was in everybody's way the whole time. No, you were not. <laughs> no, you showed up on set, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, you need to go home. Like, are you okay?" <laughs> and then, and then you were like, "No, no, I'm fine." And we just gave you a chair, and you did great. They gave me. A, they gave me a chair. They said, "You're the script supervisor," and I said. What does that mean? <laughs> and they gave me a piece of paper, and it had like a grid on it, and they wanted me to be a script yeah. supervisor. And I just wrote down, you know, nonsense, because I didn't know what I was it's doing. It's a good thing I <laughs> had you do that, versus like, hey, I need you to run the camera. <laughs> I would have done it. I would have done <laughs> it. Crushes. I would have done it. I would have hopped the whole day. It would have been awesome. Um, Thanks yeah. for your hard work. Well, thank so, <laughs> was, yeah. Were my notes useful at all? Oh, absolutely. My penmanship is just chicken scratch, no, so actually, I don't know how you could have used it. You did really great as a script supervisor. Thank you. So. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate the opportunity, uh, even though I was in the way the whole time. You I'm were not in the way the whole time. <laughs> okay. I, I believe you. I did delay it, though. Um, so the, the actors. Let's talk about the actors. Yeah. I'm curious. Uh, what the casting process was like. Was it through S Student Cinema Guild as well? So Student Cinema Guild actually did um, a production in like early March um, with an actress named Bella Bonanno. She's mm -hmm. really great, um, theater major here. And um, so I reached out to her and was like, hey, because I, I, once we started working on the script, I was like, she would be perfect for this. Like I could see her in the role. So I reached out to her and she was like, heck yeah, I'm down, which is awesome. And then, um, Sophia, actually, <laughs> so I was working on Samantha Gee's project mm -hmm. and um, the week before, and we, she gave me a ride home with Sophia, and Sophia was like, yeah, I think I'm done for the semester. I don't have anything else booked. And I was like, well, what about next week? <laughs> she was like, yeah. And so she joined on, and Sophia's great. She, we've worked on, both Bella and Sophia have worked on so many of my projects since then. So it's, it's been really great to have that like first experience with them be this one. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So your your two actresses were Bella and Sophia, and uh, and then there was Tyler. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, Sophia connected me to him. Okay. Yeah. I thought they I thought they all did a stellar job. Uh, Bella was was very good at, at being. Uh, it's hard to act whenever you don't you can't project audio. It's yeah. a silent film, and she was very good at, at being sad. Mm -hmm. And Sophia was very good at being mad. And Tyler mm -hmm. was very good at being just a bad person <laughs> and I thought I thought they did a very good job uh, and I was I was on set for one day um, and I was very impressed with both um, Bella and Sophia's ability oh my gosh to just cry Dude. on command uh, I was always just so like overwhelmed by how awesome it was to see Bella and Tyler um, interact and yes. Sophia too where they would just improv so it was silent yes. but they were in character that whole time yes. that they were improv and yes. it was just really great. Like they were coming up with dialogue and it was so accurate to the story. It was incredible. It was it was absolutely incredible to watch them act. Crying on command is such an incredible skill. I don't I can't even cry normally. <laughs> it, I'm not a psychopath or anything. <laughs> I'm just chronically dehydrated. So it's it's difficult for me. So I found that very impressive. 
Um, and yeah, it was just, it was incredible. Um, so I understand that they improvised a lot. As you said, so there, was, there was no script, right? There was a treatment. So we okay. had like a, a basic outline. Because there was no dialogue, I kept trying to turn it into a script, and it just wasn't working. Right. So then I kind of let them explore the characters a little bit. OK. I thought, I thought it was very impressive uh, that they were able to just improvise yeah. like that. Um, and have you ever done any other films wh where actors had to improvise on command like that? Yeah. I mean, uh, the last film I just did, <laughs> it yeah. was kind of funny um, seeing like the different styles of like what people did because it was Bella and uh, Claire Austin, okay. and uh, they were improvising a lot of their stuff because it was like a montage. Mm -hmm. um, so they kind of had to talk to each other. There was one scene where um, Bella steals Claire's hat right. and they run off into the distance. And they started like coming up with like all of this fun stuff to say, and it was just really great. And I ended up using a lot of the audio um, in the first like cut of the sure. film. So it, it's like really cool just right. letting actors like run with the characters after like it's like you build these characters and they kind of yeah. bring them to life. Mm. It, improvisation is so difficult. Yeah. I can't do it at all. I know the the uh, in like comedy the the rule is yes and you have to build on your partner's thing, but you can't do that whenever there's when there's no audio, you just have right. to, it, physical acting, it's so difficult. And I thought it was very impressive to watch mm -hmm. them do that. Um, the film was silent. It was also black and white. Yes. Was there, what, what, what was there <laughs> a creative choice behind that? Or were you just like, black and white? I mean, I asked for it to be black and white okay. when I talked with her because I was thinking more of that Humpy, Humphrey book. Three Stooges, am yeah. I saying the right yeah. thing? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, like kind, kind of book, like, right? Yeah. Classic yeah. kind of vibes. That classic, old timey. Yeah. You know, maybe a cut to a black screen with white text on it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. And yeah. yeah, no. And when she told me that, like, I was kind of excited about it. Um, I really enjoy cinematography, and I'd never done any black and white stuff, which kind of feels like you know something to mark off the student filmmaker bucket list. Right. I did a black and white film, so took right. you out of your comfort zone. Is yeah. all I did. I just did. made her do everything she's never done. It before. was fun. Like we had to <laughs> like learn how to change the monitor to black and white while we were there. I think you yeah. did that, or someone did that. I didn't do it. Oh, okay. Definitely. <laughs> well, I, I sat there with my crutches. Just, just you gave it. really good opinions. Like you would be like, "Oh, that was great," and I'd be like, "That was great." Let's ah! <laughs> just affirmative responses to every scene. Yeah. So no, it was fun doing black and white, and it was definitely something that, like, when I was doing it in person and seeing it in color, um, like I was watching it and I could see it in color, and I was like, "This is just right in black and white." Yeah. Because like sometimes I feel like you plan to do black and white, and you're like, "Well, did we really need black and white?" Mm -hmm. And I think black and white really just brought it all right. together. I think I think it matched the tone of the story beautifully. Uh, even though it's an ambiguous um, plot line, I think it I think it was it was very fitting for the tone and the overall mood. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know the actors improvised and I know you had a you had a general idea of what you wanted to do when you went into it. Um, but I was there and <laughs> I, I watched you sort of improvise with the camera too. You'd set up a shot and you'd be like, no. Not this. <laughs> and then you do something completely different, and it, it would always look really awesome. And I was always so impressed with how you, you just snapped decision, did something completely different, and it looked awesome. You had really cool shots in there. I know there was a tracking shot where they were holding hands, uh, uh. Tyler and, uh, and Bella. And like, first try, just followed their hands perfectly, very tight shot. I was like, how'd she do that? Thank <laughs> you. That yeah. Awesome. No, I remember when we did that, everyone was like, because <gasps> we were all like, that's so pretty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, were, we were pretty excited about that one. It was, it was awesome. Um, but yeah, your, your actors did a great job um, improvising wi without the use of dialogue, without the use of audio is incredibly just mm -hmm. impressive. I don't know how they did that. Um, they, they could take any mimes job tomorrow. Now that I say that out <laughs> loud, it sounds like an insult. That's a, that's a compliment. <laughs> that's a compliment. Um, but overall, it was awesome. Um, and I really liked, uh, you had some subtle special effects in there. I know the, the title card, you masked it in behind her head oh, when yeah. she ran off. That was awesome. Thank you to my um, program graphics class for teaching okay. me how to do that. <laughs> and <laughs> the awesome. red on the flower, I have no clue oh. how you got that. Yes. You know, Brandon, who's my main editor for that, actually did all of that. Because um, I know how to do that with like a still image. Didn't right. know how to do that with a video. And so he sent me the rough cut and figured it out. And I was like, Brandon, wow. you're a star. <laughs> I like that. It was really, this is not related at all. Um, but I am curious, whenever I see uh, a, a, a random viscous red fluid, I need to know what it is. What, what did you use? Uh. I'm curious. <laughs> so um, when we did the Student Cinema Guild production, mm -hmm. um, we used fake blood there. And so we tried the same process. Right. 
and it did not work as well um, for us, but I think it was like, what is it, corn? Yeah, corn syrup? Did corn you make syrup. your own then? Yeah, we made it. Awesome. It's like corn awesome. syrup, food, food coloring. It might have been something else, but I think those were the two main ingredients. And then everything was sticky, so that That's was awesome. that was fun. Yeah. Um, just just one last question. I know um, that you you played the the song Laudatio. Ah, nice. that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a question. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. No, I do have a question. Um, I I know you played that to the film. You watched the film and you played it. Mm -hmm. Did you play the song as your as your actors did their scenes Ooh, for them to get in the That's a good question. I don't know the answer. I did not. Yeah. And I think that's that's kind of what's so amazing about how Bella and Sophia and Tyler did is that they really just kind of mm -hmm. like read the script. I sent them the music and said like really like just think about like how you want to show these characters and they really just ran with it, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And it was really awesome when like we're sitting, you know, down she comes out with her French horn. Actually, you were behind stage when you yeah. did your uh, French horn piece with the the video, but it was really cool when I heard the first like doo -doo -doo, you know, like <laughs> it starts and then you see the film and you know, you have like a room full of people. Right. It's a little intimidating, but really fun. And then my brother, my brother actually, my brother caught a continuity error. He like, oh, the I first didn't. thing he said uh -oh. to me when we left the thing was, um, you have continuity error. And I was like, are you kind of You're not kidding supposed me? to tell them I was like, you're not supposed to tell <laughs> me that. Like, that's so mean. But the rest of my family was nice. But yeah, he caught like, um, I guess when they pick up the frame, or he, she picks up the photo and she has the photo frame instead of the photo. Oh. So there's I a little um, hint for you notice. guys to go check Easter out. Egg. Easter, Easter egg. egg. Yeah, that's continuity like, it's not a continuity it's on, I don't it's know how Easter. he caught it. It's, it's, on so, it's so like subtle. It has to do with the French horn. I think he was like specifically searching purpose. for something that I messed up just so he could rub it in my face. <laughs> Goodness. Well, I didn't notice it. I don't think it was imperative that she, that no, she did no. it. It, it was funny. It, it was funny. I liked it. Uh, yeah. Overall, awesome film. Thank you. I loved it. Great, great film to, to do our season finale for. I thought I thought it was awesome. We're so um, happy to be here. That we're happy so that good you to came. collaborate with film. Yeah, Typically absolutely. things like that have timings and you it, this was more free form. I got to right. really just play the piece and hopefully other musicians will get a chance to perform it with that absolutely. Yeah, same thing. Uh, guys, uh, thanks so much for coming. Uh, I hope to see more collaborative work from you guys together in the future. I think you guys work well together. It was amazing. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for coming well, on the show. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you for thanks. letting me be involved in the project. Yeah, of course, anytime. And, and thank you for spelling my name correctly oh, in the credits. Oh, you're so welcome. Nobody does that. Aww, Nobody does that's that. That's so sad. Well, it's with a K. I don't know why my dad did that. Mm. Anyway, thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course. And uh, that's all we have time for. Uh, and thank you for, um, there we go. And thank you for tuning in. As always, uh, if you, a friend, or anyone you know is interested in submitting a student production to be featured here on our show, you can check out the link right here. Or if you're more into hyperlinks, you can find that in the description below. Uh, it's been a great inaugural uh, season of Behind the Curtain. Uh, I, I owe it all to the crew. Thank you so much. Uh, I know this idea has been tossed around a lot in the past, and uh, we finally got it uh, on, on the air. And uh, they picked me to host it for some reason, and I'm so thankful for that. Uh, but we'll be back next year uh, showcasing more student-made films with season two in January, or maybe February. I don't know. We'll find out together. Uh, so until then, uh, I'm Eric Hunter, and this has been Behind the Curtain.